I don't know if you guys are as excited as I am that Crash Course is finally producing a physics series. I've always appreciated their slick production, their quick offbeat wit, and their dense but accurate delivery. But there's one thing in this process that Crash Course is setting up for us that's missing, and that's your practice. As a physicist, teacher, and in communication with lots of physicists, I know that practice is the key to success, particularly in physics. So I'm going to, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be your man in the trenches. I'm going to provide you some problems each week to work, and I would like for you to try working them, and I will also provide links to me working them. And I'm going to try to not practice before I do them, so I'm just going to like see the problem, and I'll let you hear my thoughts as I'm working through them. Here are two of the problems for this week. One of them is about a wrapper, so that's fun. Please pause to read that problem. And this problem over here is, well, it's a sadder problem. Please pause to read that problem. If you would like to work those problems and then come back to uh, here, you could click on this problem or that other one when I said you could click on it. When did I say you could click on it? Ah, whatever. I'll have a link at the end for all four of them, but I'll try to get this a little bit more organized. And then I'm gonna have two more problems, watch. And uh, two more problems. Problem three is about a car. That's not very interesting, but it is an interesting physics problem. So uh, you try working it and then we'll work it together. And then there's this other one, problem four, which is about a mega bus. So maybe it's a mega problem. Anyway, you can choose problems one, two, three, and four on the screen, and then you can click on them, and then you can be directed to me solving the problem in real time. No, um, no filter. So Shinny gave us these two equations. You've got here the displacement curve and the definition of acceleration. I think it's going to be really useful to have those other two equations and to use them in the problems that I'm posing right here. So I'm going to show you how we get those two equations. It's a rather quick operation um, to do. So let's solve that. First of all, let's uh, tell you what. Let's solve this for t. That will be really neat because we'll eliminate time. If we solve this for t, we find that time is, what's it going to be? V minus minus V naught divided by A. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in right here and I'm going to plug it in right there and see what happens. Let's see what happens. Delta X then equals, well I'm going to get V naught times that stuff. I'll go ahead and distribute it. I'm going to get V times V naught minus V naught times V naught Wow. And then I'm going to divide that by A. Then if I go over to this other place, I'm going to get a plus a half. Now, there's an A square in the denominator, so I'm going to write 1 over 2A out front. And then I need to square this numerator right here, so I'm going to get V square plus 2, oh, sorry, 2, uh, no, no, that's not a plus. I'm going to get V naught square minus 2 V V naught. And that whole thing is going to be divided by 2A as we see right here. So let's get, uh, ooh, I like this denominator of 2A and this other denominator of A. So what if we multiply everything by 2A? Let's see what happens. I get 2A delta X. That's sounding familiar, so let's continue to see what happens over here. This was multiplied by 2A, so I'm going to get 2V V naught minus 2V naught square, and this other stuff is being multiplied by 2A, so that's just going to cancel this business right here, and I'm going to get plus V square minus V naught square and minus 2 V, oh sorry, plus V naught square. Look at that, that's a plus sign right there. I don't know what I was thinking. And then minus 2 V V naught. Stuff happens. Let's see what happens. We could get out some uh, electric lime for this operation. I was thinking that some stuff would happen. Do you see that guy right there and canceling that guy right there? Let's do that right there. Boom. Boom. And then you've got some other stuff happening. you got this guy and this guy and this... Wait a second. This is two of those but in the basement. Like, negatively, right? 
And so if we write this again, this 2a delta x is then equal to, I'm going to get uh, v square minus v naught square. Yeah, that's all this entire right side is, and remember that's equal to 2a delta x. So let's uh, let's just write this one more little tweak, and we're going to call this equation the uh, the uh, a tail of two squares. Let's just call it a tail of two squares because you've got v square on the left side. I'm going to add this to both sides equals v naught square plus 2a delta x. So this equation will be useful for us. The other thing that I was thinking we might do is we'll solve this equation instead for a, and then we can eliminate a in the next equation. Let's do that. A equals, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to get V minus V naught, and then we're going to have to divide that by T. And then we're going to take this sucker right here, and I'm going to plug it in for A. A only appears once, wonderfully. So let's get delta X equals, and now I plug in this value for A. First I'm going to write down V naught T, because it's still there, and then I get plus one half, that's a T, not a plus, plus one half, plus one half, uh, oh, uh, V minus V naught, over t times t squared. That's cute, isn't it? This is v naught t plus one half v t minus one half v naught t. It feels like we're spinning our wheels again. Don't these things kind of partially combine and cancel just a little bit? Look at this term and this term right here. They're so similar. So ultimately, I get the equation that reads delta x equals one half v t plus one half v naught t. That's cute, so I could just write it as one half v plus v naught times t. This v plus v naught is actually the average velocity if I divide it by two. I'm summing them, uh, look I'll graph you velocity as a function of time. Here's velocity as a function of time. If you take your initial velocity right here and your final velocity right here, assuming that this is a straight line, da 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 da, the average value of your velocity is going to be halfway in between the two of them. So that's what this is saying right here. That's the average velocity. And this equation then says the average velocity times time is how far you've gone. Awesome. So we're going to use those two equations, those two additional equations, to solve problems, for instance, featuring rappers.